Welcome to the first CES of the decade. Who yes. thought? Uh, my name is Juan Garcia. I am the editor in chief of Digital Trends in Spanish. I live in DFW, and it's an uh, honor to be here. <laughs> I'm going to let my uh, the panelists. I would say my guests, but no, my panelists introduce themselves. My name is Scott Drennan. I'm the VP of Innovation at Bell. And howdy, I'm Betsy Price. I'm the mayor of Fort Worth, Texas, 13th largest city in the nation and rapidly growing. Home to Bell, Lockheed, American Airlines, Hillwood, so much going on. And it's exciting to be here to talk about smart cities and how we can impact our citizens' life and their quality of life. Hello, I'm Russell Laughlin, Executive Vice President with Hillwood Development. We're the master developer of a 26,000 acre master plan development. Um, which currently we're leaning in very heavily into the world of innovation, transportation, mobility innovation, which brings us to Bell and things we'll talk about today. So welcome. I'm, I'm Jeff Williams, uh, mayor of Arlington, Texas, and we are home to the Dallas Cowboys, the largest and most productive General Motors plant in the world. And we also are a city that is known as one of the most innovative cities in America right now. We were the first city in America to run a public shuttle that was autonomous. We also were the first city in Texas to run autonomous vehicles on our streets. In fact, with zero uh, complaints. And we are looking forward to what innovation is going to mean to our community and to our state and to the world as things move forward. Hello, uh, I'm Paul Popolo. I'm the Executive Vice President of Innovation at DFW Airport. And if you don't know too much about DFW Airport, we are the fourth busiest in the world. We have seven runways, 165 gates, five terminals, and we're looking at emerging technologies to help support 73 million passengers every day that come through our, through our airport. So excited to be here and looking forward to the opportunity to talk. Uh, I guess we can start, for those of you that doesn't know what DFW is or what it stands, it stands for Dallas Fort Worth, and uh, the metro area, it's composed of a lot of cities. Anybody know how many cities are in the DFW area? But it, it basically anchored it's by... about 75. 75. Two by two, Dallas and Fort Worth. Yeah. Those are the two main cities. And in between, there's Arlington, of course, and that's... Uh, uh, Frisco, uh, also in a, a lot of great cities that uh, really they're innovating in themselves. Now we can start asking, you know, what what are the steps that the whole metro area can can do to become a smart city or more of a smart city? I don't know who wanted to take that question. Well, from from our perspective, um, it goes back to a lot of the things we were talking about in the showcase prior. We have to think about this system as a technology system that includes the vehicles, it includes the physical infrastructure in the cities that were just introduced, and it also contains a digital infrastructure that links those two things together and allows us to safely and efficiently provide these mobility services to the citizens of, of a great place. I, I live uh, in the Metroplex as well, and I am so thrilled about the combination. Russell and I and Mayor and I were talking about this yesterday. You can't find another place like it in the world for technology. So companies like ourselves mm -hmm. and, and other OEMs that are there, um, the, the, the attitude, the, the excitement in the leadership of the cities that allows us to do the great things we're doing with them and that leads the country towards a, a standard approach and I think really even the globe. Yeah, I think it really is about not just uh, our region. We're the fourth largest metropolitan region in the nation, directly behind Chicago. And the estimate is that the 2020 census, we will eclipse Chicago. Seven plus million people in Fort Worth and Dallas and Arlington and the region around it, and the third busiest airport. And it's critical that we, 30 years ago, no longer than that on the airport now, we took a hard look at the leaders in Fort Worth and said, what are we going to do to enhance and grow this region? And the anchor became the airport. And all of you have flown through DFW at one point. And now we're spread out in the aviation industry, medical technology. Now it's our job as leaders in government 
to realize we've got to be risk takers. We can't be risk adverse. We have to be out there. You can't let the bureaucracy stop you from moving this because technology is coming. Even if we're not going to be the pioneer, somebody else is. And this is the perfect hotbed to do it. You got a tremendous airport. You got Hillwood anchored on the west, Dallas on the side, and Arlington on the south. Then you've got Lockheed Martin building jets and the infrastructure that goes with them, the Joint Reserve Base. So you've got a great place to test Bells, and you've got Bell right in the center of the region. They can test these nexus because they've got urban, suburban, and then they've got the ability to fly into rural areas. And we've got a big FAA branch there. So there's a lot going on and it makes it a perfect spot to really become that test area to set it on its edge. Absolutely. Let me, let me follow on that. So from the real estate perspective, and just keep in mind behind you the nexus. So we're talking about how we're going to introduce that aircraft across an urban air mobility footprint and introduce a new mobility option. So how do you become smart means first that our political leaders are leaning into that just as Mayor uh, Price just described. You're embracing all of these technology providers we see throughout this CES uh, convention here led by Bell in terms of the things we're doing there mobility side. So there's a reason that companies like Uber Elevator choosing North Texas to launch their urban air mobility network. It's because of leadership like Mayor Williams and Mayor Price, our Council of Governments, our state, all are saying to these technology providers, please come to Texas and we will help you stand up, develop your technology, scale it, and then commercialize it. So if we just sit here today and look at that aircraft that exists out there uh, as you walk out, we hope that in the coming year, certainly within a couple of years, we're beginning to fly that thing in a tested environment of which goes to the certification need to ultimately commercialize it. So the short answer is how do we become, you lean into it, you embrace it, and you say, let us go to work for you. And this region's doing that in a big way. Well, it's exciting times right now because we are at the beginning of a technology revolution, an opportunity for us to be able to use technology like we never have before because many of the, the, the technologies that we're using are safer and they're cheaper, and that's a phenomenal opportunity for communities. In addition to that, we as cities have the opportunity to test this technology. I mentioned to you before that we've been running autonomous vehicles on our public streets with no complaints. Well, that's because we started and working with our community and then we embraced it. And then if technology doesn't work, let's move on to the next one. Because it's very important that, as, as Mayor Price said, that we are willing to take the risk. Many times municipalities will not take a risk. Well, if you work on it quickly and let it either succeed or fail quickly, that's not much of a risk. You can move forward. And then when you have partners like Bell and the opportunity to work together and like Hillwood, it's incredible because then you are leveraging the public dollar with the private dollar and actually making it much more cost effective to be able to do it. When you think about the opportunity here with the unmanned air taxi here with Bell, it's the opportunity to move people, it's the opportunity to move product. And that's when we start talking about economic development when everyone benefits. And of course, transportation is economic development. So when you have the opportunity to be able to move people faster and safer and cheaper, actually, because you also are relieving other modes of transportation, it's a phenomenal opportunity that we all need to be embracing and moving out. And uh, we are really excited about the opportunity here of what this is going to mean uh, to our entire Metroplex because we have so many people moving into the metropolitan area, as many others do too. People are moving to the cities. So this is a key part of us moving into the smart city realm and making sure that we are using technology to our advantage and not ignoring the many opportunities that we have now. If I might intervene here, people are moving to the city. One of the reasons because of the airport, you can go anywhere in the world without even stopping nonstop from 
the DFW Airport. Yeah, we're, we're as DFW Airport, we're pretty lucky. We're less than four hours from any destination in the United States, so we're in a perfect location. Uh, and physically, we're in a perfect location amongst all our partner cities. Uh, we're right smack in the middle, uh, right uh, above Arlington and east and west with Dallas and Fort Worth. So as an airport, when we talk about emerging technologies, we're knee deep in it. Uh, you heard about testing, you heard about transportation. It's hard to take the airport out of that equation. We are a transportation hub for our region. Therefore, when we have 73 million people and we are growing that and we're expecting 80 to 85 million people to come through our airport over the next two to three years, we have to use technology to improve that experience and to prove how they move from our airport out into the communities and within the airport. So autonomous technology, it's one of the uh, fundamental areas that we're focused on as an innovation function at the airport. And so we're excited to be here. We're excited to work with our partner cities uh, and we're excited to be talking to Bell about that vehicle out there and when Russell says, look at that vehicle, I think, oh my God, we've got to support that vehicle. Yeah. And how is that vehicle going to move in and out of our airspace? And how are we going to charge it? And all that good stuff. And it's exciting times. And, and the airport is knee deep in that discussion. And so we're excited. Yeah, if, they, if they're doing that, I'm using it. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. The airport is building a new terminal, right? And Arlington is building a new stadium. And Fort Worth just finished. A new arena. We'll talk about that, but let's let's ask. Maybe we ask the the majors in the panel. What are the challenges? You know, what are the roadblocks that really uh, they you need to overcome? You know, to become more of a smart city. You know, the challenge is first and foremost is how is this going to impact your citizens? How are they going to accept it? And if most people nowadays. I mean, if you look 20 years ago, everybody out here has got a phone holding it up, taking a picture. So all of y'all smile. You're on camera. <laughs> but they didn't have that. They didn't live and breathe with our iPads. And so now it's our job to say, we're never going to pour enough concrete to accommodate your growth. You're not going to own cars. It's going to change our entire infrastructure on transportation, on the supply chain. But it also changes our financing. How are we going to look at to put the infrastructure in to accommodate this great flying vehicle? Gas tax is going down. You start using these, we don't get the revenue we had. So really, our job is to help build the security and the trust in our citizens. People are very skeptical, and they look to their elected officials to tell them, this is going to be OK. We've vetted it. I don't think, and we talked about this yesterday on a panel, that we should be here to regulate this. You can regulate innovation completely out of being. But you should be here for, to facilitate it. And you should be here to make your citizens know, if they've got questions, bring it here and to partner with the business partners and get those questions answered. You've got to build a level of trust as you change life. I mean, truly, people were very skeptical have always been skeptical, even way back in the Industrial Revolution. They were very susceptible of these and what they're doing, and still are. So you got to look at that privacy, and it's our job to help begin to alleviate that and as elected officials and build a trust. And it's it's going to take a few years to change people's minds, you know, Absolutely. that they used to take their car and go, go to work, you know, go anywhere, basically, you know, to take, you know, some kind of public shared transportation. Like the autonomous vehicle. And well, I think Mayor Price done. put it well. Education uh, there of the new innovation, being willing to accept change, and then regulation are definitely on the minds of most of the mayors in, in the country right now because it is very evident that the opportunity is there. But however, many times people have in mind, such as when you hear the word transit, all you think about is light buses. rail and buses. Yeah. Well, we have so much more to offer, and look what we have sitting right over there. An incredible opportunity to be able to expand the opportunities in multimodal transportation. In fact, I, I hearken back to the times of the 1900s when we saw the horse, the horse-drawn carriage. Mm -hmm. We saw the, the, the electric trolley running through and the automobile. Well, we are at an, another time now in which we are seeing transportation just blossoming into all kinds of opportunities. And so we've got to be sure that we get out to the people and share with them. When we ran our, our public shuttle, the first autonomous public shuttle, we had days in which our citizens could just come out and ride it and get used to it. And yes, they were pretty skeptical at first, but it all set up the time. And then a year and a half later, 
we ran our autonomous shuttles on the public streets. People can understand it if you work with it. In fact, you look at this vehicle now with Bell has done. It is a very inviting uh, vehicle in which you want to get on it. You feel safe. I mean, you look at it, it, uh, it, uh, it it's just a, a marvel there. And we see how this is going to be another jump for us. But we've got to be willing to do it. And I feel an extra responsibility as one of the few transportation engineers as a mayor that I need to be out there and, and sharing that word because if we don't, we are going to be missing an incredible opportunity. And then the other part is we've got to work with the state and federal governments to make sure that we get regulations to where, yes, they do protect our people, but yet they still allow uh, this technology to take place. Yeah. And in fact, I want to hearken back to what is the biggest economic engine in all of Dallas-Fort Worth? It's airport. DFW Airport. And uh, that's transportation right there, and it is very much... So what we're seeing right here in the, in, in the Bell uh, taxi that we see here is going to be a phenomenal jump for us from where we are now to the next generation. And, yes, we want to be a part of that. And cities have to be that incubator. Yeah. They have to be that Petri dish where it starts. As you all know, everybody knows, and Washington does a lot more policy and regulatory when they're getting anything done. Mm -hmm. But states tend to be the same way and at the local level Russell's business Bell's business isn't going to wait on local officials to make decisions we've got to be able to go out talk to our people see where they feel safe and what what it is they want and say let's move this forward otherwise they'll go to another city that is willing to take action so how many years are we from using that as a regular taxi yeah so we we think the middle to late 2020s you're going to see a certified system that includes the vehicle that has the cities properly set up with the digital and physical infrastructure that they need and so we're really excited that sounds far away but it's not that'll yeah. pass in the blink of an eye especially when you're working on high tech like this it's uh, really exciting to think about absolutely that. and there's other vehicles too i'm sorry russell uh, but the, the apt vehicle it's our unmanned uh, logistics uh, vehicle it's already flying now uh, we have a great flight planned in the metroplex uh, next June. I call it our in the wild flight. Uh -huh. And then we plan to use Hillwood's mobility innovation zone to really start to show people how it can change your business and change your life. Yeah, so if we, if we start to address the challenges of deployment, commercialization of air taxi, uh, and that could be eVTOL, movement of people, or drones and the movement of goods, it's airspace, it's the third dimension. And so it's a highly regulated environment today and there are standards that are not yet defined and so this group that you have up here between dfw airport two major cities that are leaning into transportation and understand it a oem developer a real estate developer that runs the world's only industrial airport we understand how to bring the confluence of these regulate tours and regulations and clear the deck and then begin the testing and certification. So when we say three years to commercialization of that aircraft, we mean that. We mean that we will be flying that across the metropolitan area from Alliance Airport to DFW, DFW to Dallas, DFW to Frisco, DFW to Arlington, DFW to Fort Worth, all of those around the transportation hub. Um, and that vehicle is scalable mm -hmm. at any number of levels. So goods and people, we think you'll start to see us move goods first, 25 pound packages around our intermodal hubs, and that'll lead to the airspace certification of an eVTOL that'll allow us to meet the schedule uh, that Scott just outlined. So Are there any restrictions as far as air traffic control of flying a vehicle like that to the airport? That, uh, somebody pointed out when Uber started doing that Frisco to the airport thing. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's a lot of challenges, right? And so we're not gonna we're not gonna say that there isn't. And I think those are that's the work that's being done locally as well as nationally with NASA and some of these other players about trying to define the new airspace. At the airport, we have a, a helicopter route that cuts right through the airport, so that positions us in a good a, a good space. We also have geography. We're a very large airport. We have 27 square miles, so. 
supporting and figuring out where these vehicles can land at scale is probably not going to be too challenging for us. Um, so we, we feel like we're in a good spot with regards to airspace and when it comes to the physical location. One thing I'd like to add, though, on the, on the challenges is I take a little bit more tactical approach to it. Um, technology is moving so fast, and the pace of change is, is no slower than it is today. Um, when we talk about smart cities and, and these UAVs and, and EV toll, the infrastructure that we need to have to manage these, yeah. uh, the 5G <coughs> network, the sensors, when you're a smart city, all that tech has to go in. And when you're sitting on top of legacy systems or traditional systems, that is no easy task to switch that over and digitize your core business. So that is one of the biggest challenges that I see internally for us is that we have to solve that. Second is talent. Uh, we need more diverse talent in this space. Um, we are going to need new people and new skill sets to support all this IoT and smart technology. So for us, that's also a concern. And again, the pace of change, and we talked about it here. Policy and regulations can stifle innovation, and we've got to get better at figuring out public and private partnerships to accelerate that so we can work with vehicles like, like, like Bell has out here. Uh, it takes a long time, and we just need to get better at figuring out ways of doing that. And you, so you mentioned, mentioned, sorry, go ahead. You mentioned the system earlier. If you're looking at what you're flying here in these two cities, that's going to be up to us as city leaders to figure out how do we coordinate that not just the Wi-Fi piece, but how do we coordinate the infrastructure that's needed to support? Because you can get that vehicle ready to fly all day, but if you don't have that backbone system to deliver it, it's never going to happen. Yeah. And if you can't go from Fort Worth to Arlington, into Dallas, to Frisco, it's just not going to be that's there. So we've idea. got to work with our NPOs, Council of Governments, and figure out how to do that. And our private partners are ultimately going to be the ones who are going to have to figure out the funding on it. Who's going to fund this? Who's going to put it in? Because none of you are going to pay enough taxes for us to dig up every one of your streets and put in, or to put in the cell towers that it takes. We've got to layer that in layer with these in. private partners and figure out how we approach that. I just want to go on the record. I didn't agree to pay for everything. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet, Russell. I was we got to work on that piece of it. You're, right? <laughs> you're flanked by Jeff and I. We'll work on you. <laughs> I was going to add. I think that, that, go ahead, Scott. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, just, uh, just pause and listen to the depth of understanding from this panel. Um, some, some statements were just made that it's not just about the vehicle. The vehicle's not going to carry all of the autonomous function on it, all of the communication functions on it, and, and act like a person inside of a system. And this panel understands that. That's what's incredible about the, this area that we're talking about. The other night, uh, we were at dinner together. Sight unseen, I described the cityscape to Mayor Price, and she said, I want it. I want to show it to my citizens. She got it. That's what's happening here. Russell and Hillwood creating, they're a real estate company, creating a mobility innovation zone for us to fly goods and people and information out of. Um, Mayor Williams in Arlington already has an autonomous uh, piece of mobility in his city and wants to attach air to it. And then as Paul mentioned, we already fly that helicopter route at DFW. It's one of the most exciting things you can do. And so it gives you a sense that it's not a wholesale change that we have to make. And it, it feels like it, but there are great pieces in place across all of these represented areas that we can start from and, and grow into. Now, that can't let us you know, slow down or be lazy about it, no. but we uh, have a great environment already sitting there to start it with. Absolutely. One of the so pieces let me, let me, let me that just, uh, sort of piggyback on that for a second. Yeah. So everything you're talking about here, OEM equipment, digital infrastructure, you just walk around the convention, there, there are many people that are advancing and will deploy that technology. It's here. So the question is, how do we interoperate this? What's the platform by which we exchange data? And you'll see a lot of that. So there's something about the DFW Metroplex that most people don't understand is, is that we are a huge, huge provider of data centers, uh, some 340 megawatts of data centers. The world's largest Facebook data center is at Alliance, Texas. That's important because it provides edge computing within 50 miles. It takes the latency out of communication with that aircraft and allows our municipalities, our airport, 
to provide safety in our air, air travel and or our ground travel. Really, really important when you talk about the communication side of it. One of the keys, and I said this before, and I'm going to say it again, 5G is going to change our lives, yeah. plain and simple. That's, that's the, probably the missing piece that we need to make every city smart. Uh, as far as I know, Dallas has uh, Sprint, was the first one to deploy uh, 5G in the city of Irving, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, uh, it's not just about fast internet. It's going to be able to communicate you know, with each other, low latency and, and all that thing. Uh, what can we do as citizens you know, of DFW to promote that change? You know, it's not about the government. You know? we, we like to sometimes leave everything to the government, right? So what can citizens like me you know, can do to change this mindset and, and to become more smart? Well, you know, citizens have to engage. And I've mentioned this on a panel I was on yesterday. You tend to hear from, and I know Jeff can relate to this, from a very small group of people. Either they're really fired up about something or they're really angry about something. <laughs> but every one of us, in our case, 900,000 people, and what are you, five now? Mm, Roughly four. four. But in the Metroplex, 700 million, the changes we make are gonna impact their life. You need to be engaged. You should all know your elected officials. You should know your state reps, your federal reps. You should send them emails. You should send them texts. You should watch the proposals that they're looking at. If we're looking at 5G or if we're looking at changing in light rail and moving freight or, you know, as my kids said, when can I get my pizza in one of the little ovens that comes up on my sidewalk? When, Mom, when are you going to handle that? You, those are things that will long term either make your life better or not. They'll hamstring your opportunities for education, for jobs, for everything. So you really have to, you have to get engaged. This is not a time where people can sit back. You better trust your elected officials, but you can't sit back and let them operate in a vacuum. You simply have to tell them what's going yeah. on. I, I think it's so important that we be ambassadors for change right now mm -hmm. and embrace it. Give you an idea there, uh, <clears throat> my son, I had to keep him off the of video games and uh, busy on his books, and he loved playing video games. And I told him, man, there's no money in that. You need to tell me how to And do that. as a matter of fact, <laughs> now we, we have built the largest eSports arena in the country. And you can make money playing video games. It's just now. a different set of books. It's a different it's deal, different. and I had to, and I had to change. And in fact, it's a it's a new embrace, and our world is changing so much. I I love what Paul had to say is that we've got to work hard to be able to make sure we can manage the technology, and make sure it helps us and doesn't hurt. But however, we have got to recognize that this is not status quo. This isn't the 60s, it's not the 70s, 80s. It's unlike any other time we've ever seen. And I mentioned the early 1900s just because there were a lot of different modes of transportation, but I think we are living in one of the most exciting times we could possibly be in because of the opportunity. Every day there is a new invention in technology that's coming forward. Engineers and scientists, unlike any other time before, are inventing new things. And Bell is taking a leadership role in perhaps one of the most exciting things now here in, in actually moving people and goods there in short distances and moving them around and relieving the pressure on so many other modes of transportation and improving the quality of life and taking that time of travel and shortening, which is so important because we all know that time is precious for us to be able to spend time with our families, but also time at work to make sure it's productive. So we have a lot to share with our citizens, but each citizen needs to be willing to be that lifelong learner and to be that ambassador, and we've got to share that. And then today, hopefully this will be reaching thousands of people today and what is happening so that we can open up our world and actually be able to see what is coming here in the 21st century. You mentioned century. technology changes every day. Believe me, I'm a tech journalist, and <laughs> I hard to keep up with everything that's that's going on, you know, every day it's something new. Every day someone come to me and I say, oh, how you hear about this? And sometimes it's embarrassing to yeah. say, no, I haven't, you know, because it's just 
too much. It's too much. You know, you know one, the other thing citizens have to do is they've got to push our educators, kindergarten through high school, to begin to really revamp basic education and how it's going to change to fit these jobs. Our universities are working closely, but our business community's got to get engaged early on and say, this is the workforce we have to have. We can't have a workforce that's coming up in traditional education. They've got to have the backbone, but they've got to be exposed to all these changes. And yeah, one of the so missions of, sorry, of digital trends is telling people you know, that they're not very tech oriented, you know, something like my mother, you know, that calls me every day and asks me questions, you know. People need to understand concepts like, how can a car drive himself, you know? How, how is that possible, you know? And you have to explain that. You have to change those minds, you know, a little by little. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we, we came to CES three years ago uh, related to th this topic. We knew there were a lot of early adopters here of new technology. And so I guess going back to your question of what as citizens can we do, let's leave CES and start to talk to our yeah. neighbors who didn't come, who might hesitate a little bit with technology because the folks that adopt technology, they're here. I mean, just take a little walk around. Um, also, I love the point that's being made about the education. Look, just look at that vehicle or that smart city relative to our cities today and a helicopter, for example. I can just rattle off five different new technologies that we have to teach our children to think about more. Software, um, computer science, high voltage electricity, uh, all of these, uh, the, the cloud interconnectivity, 5G communications. These are the things that we can just see right away in these presentations and encourage our uh, education system. Our, our, There's our certainly education. a lot of resistance. Our you know, you mentioned the 1900s. I'm sure there was a lot of resistance back then, you know, when they were introducing cars. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I like my horse. You know, <laughs> why do I need a car? You know, but uh, how is, uh, how, what are the changes you're seeing in the metroplex? And how do you imagine, you know, our area, you know, in five, ten years? from now? Uh, boy, I'll go, I'll go right on that one. He's, so, he's big on this. Yeah, too. so as, as we spend a lot of time in the, the logistical world, so that is movement of goods, it also includes the movement of people. Um, you can't build, as Mayor Price said, facilities that accommodate the peak demands. They just don't exist because they're two-dimensional. So when you fast forward, let's call it 10 years, we'll do it 10 and 20 years. 10 years from now, you'll begin to have the third dimension of travel being uh, articulated through the metropolitan area. That'll include either this aircraft that you have outside or one like it as we begin to test and certify. 20 years from now, so let's put that at 2035 to 2040, you are having, no kidding, scalable traffic passenger movement of that vehicle. So that takes us off a two-dimensional grid into a three-dimensional, three-dimensional, is third dimension, but it's layered at any level you want to take it once you get out of the class of airspace, so it's infinitely expandable. What that allows us to do is manage our metropolitan area and the capacity we have for those goods and movements that have to happen on the surface, right? Larger stuff. So quality of life changes. Most importantly out of that, it'll fundamentally change how we pay for infrastructure because the infrastructure is going to change from a requirement standpoint. It's digital infrastructure now, as plain as we can say it. That's signalization, that's communication between aircraft, and that's somebody managing that data, a different transportation infrastructure. 20 years from now, full-scale deployment of all of those that we just described. And you're going to see a much more regional approach. People are already living and working in one area, and it's going to be nothing. If you can hop on a flying vehicle and be to Dallas or Arlington in five minutes, and there's a lot more home com work, home commuting, or small maker spaces going on, the entrepreneurial group, they need to be able to move between the markets because the markets are pocketed, and all of this just makes those markets become seamless. 
So from a, just from an airport perspective, I think the, the challenge we have is how do you look five years and 10 years down the road when technology is moving so fast, which is what we already addressed. So when we look at our five-year plan, our five-year plan is to assess and try to figure out how are we going to support where eVTOL will be or autonomous vehicles in five years. At the same time, we're also saying, well, in 10 years, what do we think the market will be with eVTOL in 10 years? And what do we have to do as an airport? And when you look at our airport and it takes four years to build a terminal. The plans we have in place right now for technology, you might as well just you know, not even put the technology in, right? Because in four years, the technology is going to change. So as an organization, our struggle and what we constantly deal with is how do we pace ourselves? How do we plan so that we can be more effective at whatever it is that we build or support will anticipate changes in five or 10 years. And so the autonomous vehicle test we're doing today, which is actually out at our airport, isn't really about today. It's about what can we learn about this autonomous vehicle so that we can put the infrastructure in for two years from now. That's exactly the mindset we need to have. We adopted that in our company. Don't think what the readers want to read tomorrow. Think what they're going to read in five years. You know, we personally, we're changing, for instance, from, uh, from words to video. Everybody's doing a lot of video. So in that same sense, you have to think about the terminal that you're going to build in five years on the next five years, but it has to be you know, good enough for the next 20. And we don't want to, and we can't forget about the, the consumer, right? We can't, whether it's the citizen or the traveler, we can't forget about them. And we talked about it. We just assume everybody is going to adopt and be ready to go. When you have 73 million people, we don't have three or four, like marketing, three or four segments. We have 73 million segments. <laughs> and so how do you solve everyone's problem that comes through the airport? To your point, there'll be senior citizens, there'll be tech savvy folks, there'll be business travelers, and there'll be the young, you know, more, more, you know, and digitally savvy. Just, You've got to support just, everybody. Just think about DFW Airport here in 10, 15 years, when it will be undoubtedly a multimodal hub yep. in which you may be getting on Hyperloop, you may be getting on Bell's vehicle here. You may be taking high-speed rail. You may be doing autonomous transit out of there all different modes of transportation, but each one of those I named has much more infrastructure than what Bell's vehicle here will need. Right. This is an opportunity here for us to be able to move forward with a lot less infrastructure changes that would take place than we would for, say, Hyperloop or even for elevated autonomous transit because we're able to use the airspace, even though we'll need to build in the landing pads and the power that's necessary, it still is much less than any other mode of transportation that is currently on the table. And of course, the other part, and this really speaks to what Paul said, is the head of world technology for IBM told me that we probably have not seen the main mode of transportation we are gonna use 30 years from now. And that also could be very exciting. Maybe scare some, but I think it's uh, I think it's an exciting thing. Yeah. And the other thing is, you simply have to be very aware that what you do today doesn't create barriers for change that is coming. Oh, it's not just yeah. what we're enabling, but yeah. you can't. I put think we can talk in. all day about smart cities, the future, and technology. Unfortunately, they're telling me we have a, a few minutes left, and it's time for. A Q and A. If anybody has a question, say, if anyone wants to ask a question to any of the panelists, is there a microphone? They told me there was a microphone available. There's a microphone right here. Anybody? We may have covered all their questions. Anybody yeah. wants to yeah. ask something? The mayor of Fort Worth, or the mayor of Arlington, or anybody. Or any of them. <laughs> Technology related, please. No. All right. All right. Well, we're ready to go fly. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's do this thing. <laughs> Move on out into the future. Well, thank everybody for being here. Anything we want to add, everything that uh, you guys want to talk about before we go? Uh, something we just touched on but really didn't go into. I think for us as cities, the opportunity for us to have the data to be able to prove out what we're doing is really critical. And it's an area that we are branching into very definitely because then it removes the subjective and suddenly it becomes objective decisions because of the data that we have collected. Same way in transportation because I think we can gather that data and it's really, really important and it's an area that we in Arlington have taken a lead in. We're the first city in Texas, in fact, to receive the What Works Cities uh, data and it has helped us with our citizens and actually moving them forward 
in some of the decisions we made because the data is there. And uh, like I said before, too, the opportunities here to work together with the private sector and incredible developers of the technology that we have. And of course, for us, DFW Airport is phenomenal and really looking forward to what holds ahead even in the next year. My well, second home. Yes, yeah, so I'll put a shameless plug in for the airport. Um, I think we all talked about testing. I think the airport is a city in of itself. It's a smart city. So I think because of our geographical footprint, uh, because we can do, we have similar challenges that cities have, and because we have consumer experience teams and innovation team, we're a good test bed for emerging technologies. Mm -hmm. So if there are solutions out there that need to figure out how they can impact a city, we provide a, a fairly tight environment where we can test those technologies that can apply to our, uh, our fellow cities or, or the airport. So uh, I think we're in a good spot as an airport. So don't think about your airport as a traditional airport anymore. Mm -hmm. Not DFW, it's definitely a city I agree. city. I just want to take a moment to thank our guests for, uh, from the Bell side. I mean, to, to think about the integration that's required to make something like this happen and the fact that a panel like this has been put together is really impressive to me, and I thank you all for your time. Thank you for thank having you, us. Scott. It's great thank to be able thank to you. talk about it all. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here.